So Jeremy and Christian showed you how efficient the feature layer is at fetching uh, data from the feature layer using feature ties. But it's also very fast at displaying it with uh, WebGL. Now that we have all this data in the client, we can directly work with it in memory, uh, directly in the web browser, without going back and forth to a server. So in this application, for example, in the bottom right here, I have an indicator showing the current percentage of unemployment in the current map view. If I zoom uh, to uh, New York or if I pan around, we can see that this um, indicator updates really fast. We use the new client-side capabilities of the API to achieve this. Let's take a look at the code. So for example, every time like I pan and zoom around here, um, this function gets called. So first, I declare, the I declare a query. I set the geometry to the current view extent. And then I specify two statistics I'm interested in. First, the sum of the active population, and then the sum of the unemployed population. Then I execute this query directly in the client using the query features of the layer view. Then I get my two statistics back, and then I just return the ratio between the two. This client-side query engine works against feature in memory, features in memory, but it also works against other layer types like CSV. And I'm really excited to introduce that at the next release of the API coming soon, uh, we are adding support for a new GeoJSON layer. So for my two next demos, I will be using a GeoJSON feed coming from directly from the USJS. And first, I want to show you how uh, familiar this, uh, the new layer API uh, is. So we have my, the scene here, and then I'm declaring the URL to the feed. I'm creating a new GeoJSON layer with this URL, set the title and the proper attribution. And then I set the definition expression to filter the features I'm not interested in. So in this case, I'm only interested in two earthquakes with the type property, well, features with the type property earthquakes. So I just add the layer. Uh, the feed is parsed, and then all the features are shown. Let's zoom to Alaska. There is a lot of earthquakes there. I can then set the elevation info to properly uh, inform the scene view how to display those earthquakes into 3D space. So I set the unit in kilometers. This is how the feed stores the depth attribute of each earthquake. And then an arcade expression to uh, convert the value. So now. All the earthquakes are disappeared because they are below ground, so I can change the ground opacity to reveal them uh, in proper 3D. It's pretty neat. <laughs> and then finally, I will just apply a simple renderer with uh, two visual variables to, uh, pro to color and size the earthquakes by their magnitude. So then I have. Uh, the pop-up define, I can open uh, the details about the specific earthquake. Uh, the GeoJSON layer uh, works seamlessly in any projection. The data is projected on the fly, like on this um, equal area projection. Now, two more APIs. Here I have the uh, um, uh, an histogram chart of the distribution of the earthquakes by, by their magnitude. I can quickly filter my features directly in the browser and using the new feature filter API. So I create a new feature filter, and I define the where SQL clause with the magnitude range I'm interested in. And then I'm setting that on uh, the layer view directly. And all happens in the client. Let's, move, uh, let's zoom to Alaska again. And finally, I want to attract the attention of the users on a specific set of earthquakes in particular, here, uh, I, want to show, I want to emphasize the earthquakes that are deeper below the surface. So now I can uh, apply a new feature effect. It's a new API where I define that all the features that don't pass my filter will, be, uh, have, will have a grayscale and opacity effect applied. And then, yes, I define also a filter for this. So here I'm only interested in a specific depth range. 